Welcome, I'm Betty Dow, and this is the fourth session of Strokes of Love. Today, we're gonna to talk about fabric painting. I have some things to show you, and then some tips, and then a short demo at the end. So I hope you've been enjoying these weeks of the demonstration I've been doing. I plan on doing more if people are interested. So let me know if you get anything at all out of these. Okay, I'd like to start first by mentioning how I got started fabric painting. I was an oil painter, Rose Mahler, and then got into acrylics. I was taking a class at Westerheim from Gary Ulbrich, a friend and my mentor, and I said, somebody had asked me about doing some sweatshirts. And could I use the Josonia acrylics on fabric? He says, no problem. He said, um, if you have an outfit, bring it to class tomorrow and I'll demonstrate for the class. And I said, well, there's an outfit downtown I've been thinking about and it's Dacron. And I said, um, if I got that, would you do the top? And he says, oh, I'd love to. So I went downtown after class and got the top and the skirt. And then he said, make sure you wash it. So I washed it, dried it, and brought it the next day and showed the top. This is what I got. I got this top and this is what he demonstrated. Then he looked at the skirt and he says, oh, that's cute. We should be able to do something on the skirt too. So he put that on the skirt. And then when he was finished, he says, happy birthday. This is your birthday gift. So I have enjoyed it through the years. And when I start doing leather and working on purses, I did this purse. to match the outfit so that at Nordic Fest time, I was stylish. So that's how I got started with fabric painting. Once I could use the acrylics and I knew how to use them. Um, did some work on scarves and working on net or silk is very easy. The brush slides beautifully. And then here's a jumper, wear a white long sleeve with that. Here's a couple of sweatshirts. And then I have this one, which I did And this was very easy and nice. Love doing that on the, the silky Dacron. And then denim. And I love working on denim. I've done purses and um, bags. There's a couple of purses and bags on denim. I really love doing that. Here is an apron that I did. And I looked at the apron and I thought, nah, I don't know if I want a rose mole on it. But if you look very carefully, right here is this little flower. It has the stems. And I thought, okay, I copied the flower and here's an open stem and I brought it up there in the same way here. So I just repeated this flower and then put it on the pocket. And 
finish the apron off that way. A lot of times you look at something and you have to study it for a while. Then napkins are a great small project that I'll teach in classes many times because starting fabric painting, you can do a napkin and it only takes, you know, within an hour you can demonstrate they can do it and be finished. And so here are some of the, the napkins. And the thing is, you can go to secondhand stores and they'll have these napkins or you talk to people and they don't use them anymore and surprise where you can get napkins. Here's a, I love this design. And then just a napkin with one shade on it. This is a canvas. I think I got it at Walmart or the dollar store. Just a placemat. And I designed this. And then the napkins to go with it. Which makes a nice gift. There's four napkins. Four. And these are quilt squares. I've done four quilts now. And I've been doing squares, thinking I'll do another one, but I don't know, I think I have to give them to the kids and let them worry about it. But this is one of the designs from one of the quilts. And then this is a design I've been, fabric I've been working on lately. I fell in love with this color, background color. And the rose mulling on it so pretty on this background color. So I've got all of these different squares. And I don't know how the red one got in there. It's, it must, oh, it's not finished, so it must have been a demo. And then black squares made. Here's another square from one of the first quilts and here too. And this is interesting. Get your board, put your pattern on, get it good and wet, and then where you want red or blue or that, you put a little color and it runs. And it's like a tie-dye. And so here's a couple examples of that. So you put the color on, it runs, and then everything is done with the liner brush. And that's sort of fun, something different. Here's another napkin out here. Here's a, I've had this suede notebook for probably 20 years, and was going to paint it, never did. So I just pulled that out and painted this. And this color is just fabulous to, to work on. So I got that. And then when I was done, then I used the blow dryer to heat, heat set it because I didn't want to use the iron. And then this is for your glasses. Very simple. This can be thrown in the wash machine in the dryer and, you know, use it again. Here is a, a practice piece that I used for one of my classes where everybody used, did the different designs. 
right here are a couple of towels. The towels were like this, and I couldn't see painting there, and I thought, why not put it on the other side, and you can either use it this way, or you can use it that way. And the design I took out of Strokes of Love, my coloring book here, on page 45. And what it is, it's a half of the design. I just took half of the design. And most of the things that I've been painting, I've taken flowers out of here. Here's also that page where I did the whole design that I could use on the apron here. This is this friend, Claudia Girl. She does aprons and purses. And she asked if I would rosemal some. And so I took the designs out of my book and did this pocket for this apron. It's not quite finished. The ties have to be put on. And then I used the various pages of the book and did these designs. And then this is a bag. And I took the flowers out of the book. This is another, this is a piece that I had painted some time ago and uh, gave it to her and she put it in the purse. There's another scarf. And one of my shirts. And then this is a blouse. I like to paint a little something on the front and then bring it around to the lapel on the back. And I love wearing fabric painted things, especially rose mold, because people will comment on them. And then I can talk to them about rose molding and tell them all about it. And that's how I've gotten some students. Okay, I'll get this set up now for the demo, while Marcia shows close-ups of, of some of these things. Marcia, here's a one of the masks that we I even On those sweatshirts, there was a lady that contacted Vesterheim 
and she said she wanted a couple of sweatshirts done for the holidays. Did I know, did they know anybody? And at that time, I lived a block away, Vesterheim in Decor. And made the con they made the comment, oh yeah, Betty Dow down the street is fabric painting now. And gave them my phone number. So she gave me a call. This is the 1st of November, teaching two classes a week, four kids, a lot of extracurricular activities. And um, she said, could I mail you a few sweatshirts and would you do them? So I quoted her a price and everything. And she said, you know, if I could have them by the 1st of December. I says, no problem. So I got the package and there were six sweatshirts. And I thought, oh, great. So she said, each one was a different color. And she says, you can put any design on you want. So I did. I got them ready for mailing and called her and told her that they would, I think she was in Indiana, they were on their way. And uh, she said, well, you know, there's three more names, there's a couple of more names. She said, a couple of more names of family that I'd like to give them to too. She said, now, would it be possible for a couple of more if I got them in the mail today? And uh, I thought, oh my, she says, don't have to worry as long as they get here by the 24th of December because they'll be under the tree. And I said, okay, I will try very hard, which was really asking a lot because I had a lot of orders that had to go out at that time. I was doing birth plates and wedding plates and trunks, plus teaching and keeping up with my family. So the package came with four more sweatshirts. I got them finished and she got them by the 24th. And after that, I didn't care if I saw a sweatshirt for another year, but she was happy and they did turn out very well. Okay, enough of that. What I do is I have a board and I cover it with plastic and then I put the, whatever I'm using on it and I tape it down so it's taunt. And this is a board that I put the piece that I was showing here that I did on the towels. This is another towel that I'll do. And so this is ready to go. I thought today I would demonstrate this napkin. And this is the placemat that goes with it. I put it on a piece of cardboard that's been covered. And then I have on a piece of tracing paper the design and with my stylus or a pen, I copied the pattern onto the corner here. And this is, this is transfer paper and this is tracing paper. And I used the black on light colors and on the dark colors, I used the white. And this design is on page 65 of the book. I took that out of that. Okay, the brushes I'm using are Pure Touch 4 and 6 Filberts and the Ott Liner plus I have three scrubby brushes. They're low Cornell's. You can get them in various, but these uh, I've had for years, so I'm using those. And those are my scrubby brushes, and I'll show you how to do that. Usually I use a wet palette, but for something like this, I'm just going to 
put it on a piece of cottage cheese cover and I'll throw it away when I'm done. Okay, I'm going to use Josonia Burgundy and then Indian Red Oxide. See, I want two colors that I'll use on this particular piece. On the other pieces that I had there, naturally I had a lot more color. But for just this short video, I thought I'd better keep it simple. This is the Texto Medium. And you use, that'll be any time I want, instead of using water. You use one part of paint, or two parts of paint, to one part of the Texto Medium. got my knife here I will mix it up you see some people mixing it with their brush that's fine too but it's keep the brushes in good condition and you don't have to buy them so quickly it lasts longer the one thing I do want to mention that when you're using any of these mediums especially this particular texto medium you want to make sure that you clean the brush afterwards. And I use this um, brush soap and cleaner and get the paint and the medium out of it because otherwise it gets real sticky. And uh, if you go to use it on, you know, other painting, but I use the same brushes. I just make sure that they're clean well. Okay. And the one thing you don't want to use is water, unless you're doing that one particular style. If you want to get any moisture, you just go into the medium. And I'll edge it or side load it in burgundy, the lighter of the two. And then I'm just gonna go around and do C strokes, which is a C here, C. And then I'm going to take my scrubby and bring it in. Now this particular napkin is a different fabric. This is a much softer and closer knit. So it's, you run into a lot of bumps. And then I'll go back into the same spot. Now I'm just doing the leaves because anything underneath the design is done first. And the tulips on top and the leaves are under. And then you just do some scrubbing. And this does blending, especially when you're working on sweatshirts or fabric that 
has a lot of nap to it. But you can get it into the the more you blend it, the smoother it looks. And we've got a couple of more leaves here. take my scrubby brush and the one thing you want to make sure that when you're doing something with many colors be careful with your scrubby brush make sure you have several of them because I was working on one up one outfit and grabbed it and it happened that I was had had it in another color so there, I had a color that I did not want in that particular spot. Okay, now I've got this little heart shaped here. And I'll just put that in. Then I'll do the tulip. And then the line work, and we're done. Okay, on the Tulip here. There, this is an S stroke here. <laughs> and S stroke on the other side. This is taking a lot of scrubbing on this particular fabric. That's why I like working on fabric like the blouse that I've got on, because that is like working on a fine piece of wood. It's easy. Okay, now I'm just going to take my liner brush and I'm going to take the darker value 
and outline it and put the line work on it. So this will bring it all together. Hopefully. The other day I was doing something and got a paint, a few paint drops off of the brush in a spot I didn't want it. So then it had to be designed. And it turned out pretty good. It was one of those happy mistakes, as my granddaughter used to call it. I get quite a few happy mistakes in some of my fabric painting. Okay, I'm going to put some vein lines in these leaves. And according to the pattern, always good to look at the pattern, see where you're supposed to be. It should be the same as that one, but who knows? Yeah, I think it is. So we've got some tears here. In the same way on the other side, a couple of tiers. I've got the top one that goes up, and then the bottom one goes down. Okay, now I've got the tulip to work on. So I'm going to outline the S, and then there's a little C here. And the outside is an S, and then a C stroke here. And then from the center here, it's going to come up. And then I'll bring it up the, the other side here. And then put a little, a few teardrops in here. And a big center there. I've got this little heart here. Bring it down to a point, down to a point. And then I have a little reverse tear to decorate it, the embellishment. And then the stem lines come up. And everything comes, this is the root right here. So everything should come from there. So this will come from here. The 
it really looks ragged with this fabric. Okay, then we've got three tiers here. The one that comes over. And then go back over if there's anything that needs to be touched up. Sometimes after it dries, you can go over and get it just a little darker. And then I always sign my name and get a In the early years, I just signed my first name. Now I sign B. Sometimes just D and then, or if I can get the whole name in, I'll put Dell. Looks like I need a few more tiers right here at the bottom to finish it off. Always do the center one first, then one on either side. Okay, that shows you a quickie on fabric painting. You want to make sure that whatever you're going to use, you wash to get any starch out of it or anything like that. And you want to make sure that you do not use softener. So you wash it and dry it, and then get it as taut as you can on a piece of cardboard or wood that's been this plastic in the back of it so that the color will stop it. And then you let it set for, I just let it set overnight. And then the next day I'll heat set it. And what I do is take it off of this and then put it on your ironing board and put some tissue paper over it or else use a lightweight towel and put the iron on whatever the material is and I usually put the iron on and count to 20. And then I'll do the back side too. Uh, and that's how I do it. When you're mixing your paint, it's one, two parts paint to one part of the medium. And what I like about this is that I did a, a towel rack and um, I painted the towel rack, and then I thought, okay, I'll paint the towels too. So I had the, the palette from the towel rack, and all I had to do was add the textile medium to it, and I had matching colors. But it's one of those fun things that, you know, you can do and try and uh, experiment. There's a, one time I used this. It was a little taunter and that worked okay. It's not as good as this, 
And this is another project that I got out of my UFO projects and the pillowcases. So I got that painted on so far, still have some to go. And uh, nice pair of pillowcases too, good quality. Need to get those, you know, done. And a uh, little bit of everything. And I had that big pillow in the living room and I thought, oh, it looks so plain. So I just freestyled some things on it. It sort of is ugly now, but you can always turn it around to the other side and it looks good. But, you know, that was a, a trial and error type thing. But the thing is that by doing fabric painting, if it's on a blouse or, you know, dress or purse. I've got a purse over there, a denim purse on the top that probably, it, it's about 15 years old. It's been washed. I throw it in the wash machine in the dryer and use it again. But whenever you have something like that, it makes a statement. And I've gotten more comments and more people talking about rose molly by doing that. And they make nice little gifts. I mean, you can get these napkins. I got the napkins. I got the napkins at Walmart. And I think I got this at Walmart too. And you can do the placemats and napkins very reasonably. Or pillowcases or things like that makes a great gift. And since we've been locked up lately, I've been into the box. I got a large box of fabric painting. And I came up with a lot of UFOs that I've had for 20 years. I'm not sure I'll get them all done because I'm moving on now to ornaments. And a week from today, I'm going to be Zooming an ornament class for Rose Mall, National Rose Mauling Day, which should be fun. And uh, I noticed that I've got five people from California and one from Arizona and somebody from Indiana and Illinois. So from all over, you know, we're going to have these students and we're going to do a ornament out of my book. And this has been a chance for me to share my book and the styles that are in there since I can't get out and teach right now. But hopefully by next year, we'll be able to get back to teaching in groups and things like that. So I hope that you've enjoyed this as much as I enjoy sharing with you and doing this rose mulling. I love this painting and for me it's my art therapy. So God bless and enjoy. Thank you.